Hi there, it's nice to meet you. Welcome to my Research Without Borders exhibit. My name is Octavia and I'm a biology student at the University of Bristol. Today I'm going to tell you all about my research. My research is looking at the effects of artificial light, or light produced by humans, on the behaviour of marine animals that live on our beaches and in our oceans. I am trying to find out if beach lights and lights coming from cities and houses are bad for marine animals. And if they are, I want to create ways to reduce these effects to ensure these animals can live healthy and happy lives. A long time ago, humans lit their houses by lighting candles and burning coal, but this all changed in 1760 at the start of the Industrial Revolution. During this time, technology really advanced, especially in the manufacturing industry. This was also when the electric bulb was invented. In 1879, Thomas Edison invented a safe, affordable and easily reproducible light bulb that burned for 13 and a half hours. This changed the way we lit our homes and our cities. This amazing invention has allowed us to work, build and party longer and has been incredibly important in the development of our society and our technology. But unfortunately, like a lot of things humans produce, artificial light can have negative effects on animals. The first part of my research was to try and understand and explain why some animals are badly affected by artificial light. One of the main reasons that animals can be affected by light is because of an internal clock that we find in our brains. These are called circadian rhythms. These aren't visible clocks, but are ones that are made in the brain and are then controlled by different hormones. For these clocks to work properly, our brain picks up the light from our eyes and these signals are then used to time certain behaviours. For example, these biological clocks are important so that we are tired at night, we are hungry when our bodies need food, and so that we are awake during the day to exercise and carry out other important tasks. We have adapted to these behaviours with the patterns of the sun, which is why natural light patterns are important for circadian rhythms. Just like us, animals also need the natural light patterns from the sun to time a variety of behaviours. Here are some examples of how artificial light can affect lots of different organisms. For example, artificial light can make it difficult for animals to sleep causing them to be tired during the day, which can affect their other behaviours, like foraging for food or finding a mate. Here's another example. Birds are sometimes attracted to sources of light, and there have unfortunately been cases of birds accidentally flying into brightly lit buildings. Even plants can be affected. Very bright lights can damage the structure in plants that's important in photosynthesis. Plants must carry out photosynthesis to obtain energy, and without this ability, they won't survive. I'm now going to tell you about my experiments and how I am carrying out my investigations on artificial light and animal behaviour. I am using crabs as my study organism because there haven't been many studies on the effects of artificial lights on the behaviour of animals that spend some of their time in the sea and some of their time on the land. These are called intertidal animals. Each week I head to the beach to collect a number of crabs, which I then take back to my lab. Once in my lab, I put the crabs in a small aquarium where they have fresh, salty water and plenty of food every few days. A camera is placed next to the aquarium to take a photo of the crab every minute. I then apply different artificial light sources to the crabs to see how this alters their behaviour and movement patterns. After each experiment, I download the images of the crabs and run them through a special computer program. I can then visualise this data on a graph to see how individual crab movement changes over time with different light sources applied. My experiments have so far shown that natural light is indeed essential for crabs to maintain their circadian rhythms. 
My future experiments will hopefully reveal whether different colours of light bulbs have a greater or lesser effect on crab behaviour, whether different intensities of light makes a difference, in other words, brighter or dimmer lights, and whether there are better times for lights to switch on and off to reduce the effect on crabs. I can then hopefully publish my results and let people know how beach lighting needs to be improved for crabs and other marine animals. Thanks so much for watching my presentation and for being part of my exhibit. I really look forward to answering your questions. And remember, try to reduce the amount of lights you have on at home, especially at night.